a challenge to remain silent. With the recent upsurge of Calvinism, a number of leading Calvinists have begun to take a far more aggressive stance in its public promotion. Both sides, in fact, are increasingly making this issue a matter of fellowship in the Lord, resulting in division in a number of otherwise sound churches. In some churches, members are forbidden to promote Calvinism even privately. In others, only Calvinists are accepted as members. Of course, the latter has been true of pastors and mission candidates for centuries in nearly all Presbyterian churches, and even in some Baptist churches. But now that position seems to be growing. Almost daily, I found that this subject was claiming a wider interest and greater importance than I had ever imagined. It seemed obvious that there was great need for further research and writing to deal with this important issue. As it became known that I intended to write such a book, a number of pastors cautioned me to refrain from publicly expressing myself on this subject. Some claimed that, out of ignorance of its true teachings, I had already misrepresented Reformed doctrine. A typical response from the Calvinist friends, to whom I had sent an early manuscript for comment, went like this. The caricatures you present and the straw men you construct demonstrate to me that you have absolutely no understanding of the Reformed position, and until you do, I would counsel that you refrain from putting anything in print. Letters began to pour into our ministry, the Berean Call, from around the world, many from pastors insisting that I was unqualified to address Calvinism and urging me to seal my lips and drop my pen regarding this topic. It was suggested that I would lose many friends and alienate myself from leading evangelicals, most of whom were said to be convinced Calvinists. Furthermore, who would publish such a book, since the major publishers had brought out many books supporting the other side? What moved me most was the concern earnestly expressed by close friends that a book from me on this issue could cause division. The last thing I wanted. We can hear it now, several friends told me. Here comes Dave Hunt again. This time he's attacking Calvinists. That concern weighed heavily upon me. One must be willing to accept wise counsel. But the advice to remain silent, though given by so many out of genuine concern, seemed, after much prayer and soul-searching on my part, to be ill-advised. Spurgeon called the debate over God's sovereignty and man's free will a controversy which I believe to have been really healthy and which has done us all a vast amount of good. My heart's desire is that this book will be only to God's eternal glory and to the blessing of His people.